Okay, and we just called this um, K-12 can compute. I know this is a K-5 um, convention of, of thinking, but we're a very scaffolded K through 21. I mean, we have um, plans for all different age groups. Um, I wanted to introduce the people that kind of gathered together to share some of their information. Myself, Cheryl, and most of you know me, I'm the regional manager for CODE. I have Sam, he's the grants manager and outreach for Alaska Council of School Administrators. Brittany Bailey is here from the Department of Education. Whoop, whoop, we're so excited. Um, the, she's school recognition and support administrator. And Joy Abbott also is from uh, the Department of Education and she's a math and science content specialist. And um, is my um, screen here in the way? My um, face is. No, it looks good. Okay, so then my screens aren't advancing. There we go. So um, we hope to cover unique needs for computer science in Alaska. Um, uh, what we're doing to bring computer science to classrooms. Um, Stan can share a little bit about the computer science standards, and the lady from depart the ladies from the Department of Education can share more about how they can support. Um, educators, administrators, districts across Alaska with um, the implementing standards, integrating standards into other content areas. They're doing a lot of um, work and I'll let them talk about that. How to, I, we, Sam and I would like to share a large and a small district um, plan for implementing, implementing um, computer science so that um, people can see some possibilities that might work for them. And then Sam included his wakelet. So Sam, you want to talk about some unique needs? Yeah, thanks, Cheryl, and really great to be on with everybody. You know, Alaska has a really um, incredible and unique economy. Um, and when we think about computer science jobs across the state, um, there's opportunity really in, in so many different areas. And so this is just a, um, a kind of a picture of, of all the different areas, we could we could deep dive on each of these. I think one of the, the ones that I find uh, most intriguing is our fishing industry and how much data is done, um, kind of tr tracking and thinking about uh, fish and the, the water that fish go in, the temperatures of the water, um, the kind of movements that people see with fish, just collection of data. Um, and then also the, the tracking of, of fishing ships uh, our big fleet um, that drives that part of the economy, um, also uh, that provides lots of information about the environment out on, on the ocean. So in, in each of those instances, we've got computer science driving, you know, how we collect data and how uh, we then process data. Um, certainly there are, there are people who work for the state of Alaska and for private entities that are using computer science to then create these pictures of, of um, what is happening in the fishing industry that then help us drive you know, the movement forward. Um, so that's just kind of one instance, but really across you know, our, our infrastructure of um, um, oil production, mineral extraction, all, all those have cybersecurity or computer science components to it, certainly healthcare, wildlife management. Um, even down to shipping, which can be a unique circumstance here in Alaska to get something from the lower 48 up to um, an Arctic community takes uh, quite a bit of, of work to, to track the, you know, the materials, the boats, the weather. Um, and, and in each of those instances, there's a job, right? And there's a job for um, a student who's coming up through public schools in Alaska where they could, they could become that worker. And, um, we really want to, you know, build up the opportunity for those students to to participate in computer science education, so that they could choose to, to potentially uh, fill the that that job space someday. Thanks, I think I'll Sam. leave it there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I cybersecurity is one that's standing out right now with with all of us getting hacked and different things and. Um, our stuff going out and our military in Alaska has really ramped up and it's really high tech. So um, that's a really important part of our economy in Alaska also. Mm, I'm gonna let someone else in here. And my slide won't move forward, there we go. 
Bringing computer science to all the classrooms. Um, I looked up um, this week and we have 1,352 jobs. And I often say to schools, um, would you like your students to be able to apply for one of these jobs and be able to stay in Alaska? And the average salary is $81,000. And for a starter job, that's quite, quite nice. So um, we have 32% of our high schools in Alaska teaching um, a computer science class. And they're um, in a variety of vendor groups. We only had 28 um, computer science graduates. And this is back to about the most recent data for graduates is probably 219, maybe 220, you know, 2020. So um, hopefully we have more um, policies that make computer science happen. Um, we don't have dedicated state funding for computer science. I will say that we have um, partners who are vested into computer science being in their workforce and they're, they're supporting us. We have GCI, Alaska Airlines, and then code.org has many across Amazon and all of those. And we have got support from Alaska um, Department of Ed through some um, isolated small grants to keep us going. And that has been helpful and we hope that that continues. Um, we don't require high, uh, computer science to graduate, but I will say that the commissioner um, shared a, um, his thoughts that math and science can be considered, um, you can get a credit for math and science if you're teaching computer science in your school. So that's um, a great piece. And we do have computer science standards and we'll cover that in just a second. Um, uh, who? I think we always wanna know like, how is it happening here? Who's doing that? Well, code.org is working with Alaska Staff Development to bring in K through 12 training for teachers. And at this time it's all scholarships and no cost to schools or teachers. Um, we have some partners that help with like Alaska Airlines is gonna fund our uh, computer science discovery teachers to meet together. And that's a wonderful gift. And that's one of our biggest expenses is trying to convene teachers together is travel. So we're very thankful for that. And we do hope that um, COVID gets in a better place where we can meet uh, Alaska Department of Education. Standards, again, without the standards, it's, it's like, why are we teaching this? What do kids need to know? Where do they need to be? Um, grant support and Alaska Airlines, and we talked about those already. So, um, and how we're actually um, accomplishing this is through individualized outreach, conferences, professional development, and by um, helping schools realize how they can meet the standards. Um, many schools didn't even know that we had computer science standards, so that's been a, a great awakening. We provide um, one-day workshops, and mostly they're virtual, and um, the four-day, that's kind of there's a little misnomer there, but we have four day follow ups and support for um, discoveries six through 10 and nine through 12. So we actually have nine full days for those. Strategic planning and um, Sam has done some of this and some, so have I, but we have actually worked with schools like, what do you want to look like in three years? And gone through and helped them make steps to go from 30% to 60% to 100% of classrooms ready. And so um, if anyone um, knows of someone that needs some help with that, we're always help, helpful with their strategic planning as well. And um, she talked a little bit about the courses, but I wanted to give you a, a step back and looking at um, where we're kind of overlapping and what we have for the K-5, like for this conference, we have fundamentals, but we have um, six through 10 that um, offers a, a more, it's, it's more closer to um, industry ready and CS principles is very much more toward the industry um, work and CSA is coming um, next fall. CS principles can also be an AP class. We have um, courses for non-readers and then the express is often offered for online only if they don't have access to our sort of kinesthetic hands-on, no computerized participants participants. So Sam, since you put this together, I'll let you share this slide. Yeah, you know, ASDN is, is code.org's regional partner here in Alaska. Once we get to the end of the school year, we always take a step back and just see, you know, what have we been able to accomplish and then think about where we want to go. Um, last year was a complicated year for everything. 
Um, but despite that, we really still made great movement forward. Um, and that really, I would attribute that to, to both Cheryl's work, you know, out there working with school districts, um, the support from the AS ASDN team, um, but also to the interest of educators that despite COVID and despite all the complications of teaching uh, that they went through last year, they remain very enthusiastic about teaching computer science. So we had the opportunity over the last school year to do um, 22 professional learning programs kind of across those different um, divisions of curriculum that, that Cheryl just shared. Um, we're now working um, with at least one teacher in 42 out of the 54 school districts. Um, there are, you know, seven, 73,429 students with code.org accounts. So that means at some point there's been a, a teacher, uh, even a parent who has um, ha helped that child uh, get logged in and start working on some computer science. So, you know, we have, you know, roughly 100, what, 135,000 students in Alaska. This is a huge percentage of those who are, have had some sort of introduction or discussion about computer science. Um, and then, you know, our um, new teachers trained uh, through code.org last year was 228. So we're, you know, just seeing a real groundswell. It is a very grassroots uh, work that teachers are doing around the state with regard to computer science. Really wonderful to see this. We, we were really um, surprised at the end of the year when we looked back during a strong COVID year that we were able to reach 228 teachers. But we also were excited to find we're at 649 teachers in, as of September across the, the, the three years that we've been working. So, um, Stan, I'll let you say a little bit about the standards here. Yeah, so in 2019, Alaska adopted computer science standards. Um, and it was done through a process of um, looking at what standards were out there, what was best for Alaska, um, and a whole group of, of great educators from around the state came together um, and did that work over six, seven months um, to come up with uh, the Alaska computer science standards. They're largely based on the Computer Science Teachers Association uh, K-12 standards, um, but, you know, we're, we're very thoughtfully done by Alaskan educators to think about scope and sequence and what would work uh, within our, our context up here. Um, they're, you know, they're meant for um, creating a real baseline of literacy in computer science for Alaskan students and, and making that uh, potential bridge to um, college and career so that a student who were to have mastered um, the Alaska computer science really would be industry ready uh, in most circumstances. They'd have a lot more than most students um, in Alaska. So it's such a great foundation uh, for teachers to know what computer science can look like in their classroom. It's done in, in grade bands. And so um, there's a real access point for any educator who wants to jump into those. I apologize for my my cat in the background here. Um, and, and so, yeah, the standards are out there. And, I, and Cheryl, thanks for putting the QR code in that'll take folks right to that on the Alaska Department of Education website. Thanks, Sam. If I can get here. So Joy and Brittany, you want to share a little bit about your work? Sure. Um, I'll go ahead and start and then pass it to Joy because I have another meeting I have to get to in like two minutes. Um, but um, good morning. Uh, we are from the Department of Education. And one of the big things that we're working on this year is refreshing how we present the standards. We're not refreshing the standards, but how um, we are providing them to our teachers, uh, the way we have them on the website and the resources we have to go with them. So that's one of the huge lists that Joy and I have been trying to tackle and then we'll continue to tackle. And I also apologize that you can't really see me. I just changed offices, so everything's like wonky right now. Um, but if you look at the slide, we have, yeah, standards for focus and awareness coming soon, newly created and revised standards resources are going to be so pretty, much easier to read and follow. Um, our website is actually going to be user friendly. We're excited about that. And uh, I, I don't want to say everything, but <laughs> I'm covering the whole slide now. Um, if you need anything, you can contact myself. Um, I'm the school recognition and support administrator. 
brand new actually today is my first day as the administrator. So don't ask me any questions yet. I won't have the answers. Thank you. Um, but very soon I hope to have them. And until then, I will pass you on to Joy, who is just the most stunning person and she's fantastic. So Joy, go ahead and take it. And I'm actually gonna dip out to my next meeting. Well, thank you so much, Brittany. Um, so I am Joy Abbott and I am the uh, math and science content specialist for the state as of June. So I've not been in this role very long, but what I wanted to say about this is that um, although my title is math and science, um, I'm here to support standards instruction. And there is not a person at DEED that's specifically dedicated to computer science, but we do on the DEED uh, website have a few documents that show um, how you could um, implement computer science and digital, digital literacy standards in any of the four main content areas and how you can overlap. And I would also like to say that we did adopt brand new science standards in 2019 and they're kind of modeled on the next gen science standards and if you know anything about those you know that we have in those standards um, science and engineering concepts and as well as cross-cutting concepts and so these are perfect places when you're dealing with science education that um, it's a, this 3D model of science education where you could be taking your data and using it using some computer science um, standards as well so that there's a way to implement this material in your core content areas and I'm here to help if you need um, assistance with that and like Brittany said we are creating new and revised documents that will assist districts and teachers across the state and our contact information is here so please uh, look us up and um, ask us whatever you need. Thanks, Joy. That was great. Um, and um, that is part of our um, our challenge is to get our information out on how to access and use the standards in a, a friendly way. So um, I we're we're real short. Um, we have one minute, and I guess I will say in my one minute, Alaska School Di uh, Anchorage School District has implemented um, K through five. Um, uh, code.org in each grade level. So in their science unit, they have a computer science unit and it's the code.org um, fundamental for that grade level. And six and seven are using discoveries. And I wish I, we had more time to talk about that, but I'll give you the other 50 seconds, Sam, on Yukon Koyakuk. Yeah, ASDN has been really uh, privileged to work with the Yukon Koyakuk School District on a math and computer science grant. And so the work has been introducing their staff to computer science through that lens of code.org and that curriculum. Um, we have a number of educators who've gone through the cycles of, of learning. Um, we've also supported them with some um, professional development, just thinking about what can you do with computer science and kind of that next step has been to then move into using robots. We've got a bunch of Sphero robots rolling around the district right now and also using Microbits, which is a tiny little computer um, and getting code from you know a screen where they're doing block coding onto those devices and really making that physical computing connection. So incredible work um, in that really rural school district. Thanks, Sam. Let's see if we can, whoop. Um, I wanted to be sure, whoops. I wanted to be sure that um, you got your phone. You could go to Sam's Wakelet. He has a, a, a great collection of computer science resources that might be helpful to everybody in the future. Sonia and Cindy, um, visit Sam's Wakelet and see if there's something you can um, grab for your own state or Cindy for your own district. Um, I encourage you to, to kind of build your own also. So I'll give you a few minutes to get that or get that copied down. Um, I think that you'll find that very helpful. Um, I think I'll go back to our first slide to kind of close out and it has our phone numbers and our uh, emails on it. So if anybody has that, Cindy, you know how to get a hold of me, Joy, Sam, everybody does. And Sonia, if you want to do any collaboration with um, through our code.org regional work, um, I would be glad to talk to you. We'd like to do a, um, a regional meetup maybe for that CSA um, that's coming out in the fall, because I don't, we don't know how robust of our population will be ready for that. And maybe we could collaborate with some other states and have one Northwest 
really great co uh, convention of high school teachers. So um, if you'll contact me, Sonia, I'd like to follow up with that if you're interested. So sure. anybody, go ahead. Um, go ahead, Sonia. Somehow I missed your contact information. I'm going to take you to the first slide again where that's at, OK? Everybody close their eyes. <laughs> Whoop, there it is. And there's everybody's um, information. You can take a screenshot of that, maybe. But um, anyway, I'd like to work with you. And Cindy, if you have any needs there in Sitka, please let us know. Um, we're doing some deep dives. And if your teachers are ready for a deep dive, contact us and we'll get something going. In fact, I might be able to get something going for you with Wrangell on October the 11th. So contact me, Cindy, if you're interested. I will. Thank you. Yes, and um, we, we love you and miss you. <laughs> So I think, um, was I um, clear saying that we were supposed to at 12.30 go back to, or at 12 o'clock, go back to the main thing, or do we close out from here? Do you know? At 12.05, he gave us an extra five minutes, and then oh, everybody good. will need to go back to their original link to access the main uh, webinar again. Okay. We will automatically was go back. Thanks, I wasn't there for that. So um, any questions from anybody else, either the panel to each other, um, Sonia or Cindy, anybody that has any questions about um, things that are happening? Cindy, we'd love to have some more high school teachers and middle school teachers. Yeah, so um, I am working now in a new role for the district. And so I'm definitely a K-12, now I'm um, trying to get the excitement going for computer science. So I'll definitely be reaching out and hopefully Excellent. all that. And, and Cindy, also, um, if you need help putting together like, a, I don't know exactly what you're planning, but maybe a three-year plan, how you're going to go, how many percent students and teachers at the end of three years is your goal. Um, we'd love to help you work with that too. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. So I think that's about it. Uh, Joy, do you have anything else to add or questions? No, none at all. Well, we hope that um, Department of Ed, um, we have a proposal in for Department of Ed to help us with um, um, uh, extra follow-up with the uh, CSF and CSD. And um, I hope to hear from them soon. It's Sandra has that. And CSP is run through our federal EIR program. And we have a grant that's paying for the teachers to be trained, the teachers to be um, their travel, um, their um, curriculum guides, their materials to teach, and all of that is paid through it like a, a EIR grant. And um, we are going to include principals and the um, counselors in that program. So we'll have a, a training to help counselors um, uh, help kids find computer science in their curriculum. That's really awesome. important. Is if we don't have counselors helping get kids in the class, if they just take all the kids that couldn't find a class and put them in at the end, it's a, it's a tough class, you know, for yes. kids who didn't, who, who weren't picking it on their own. So I think that getting some counselors involved is going to be very, very helpful for us. And then um, admin support is really important. Like the teachers don't just get to um, take CSD or CSP, they apply and their admin has to participate in their acceptance. Mm -hmm. So we've had some teachers that applied and their admin didn't approve it and it didn't approve it to be a taught course. So we weren't able to train them. So anyway, but thank you everybody for um, joining us. Thanks for bringing us all together, Cheryl. Hey, we're glad to have you and welcome to Alaska, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.